And then I know you're dying on that part, but just more, more arms, you know what I mean? Yeah. Makes you look more fighter. Okay. <laughs> What's up? What did we change all this to? Uh, oh, that hinge was rough. It's a hinge <laughs> yeah. and then fall. Uh, she says, but your blade, it might be too sharp. I'm like a rubber band till you pull too hard. Yeah, I feel like it's getting a lot better every time. So. Yeah. She's demanding as, as can be. I mean, what these dancers go through. Those kids are so intense. I hit my knee, had a huge hematoma the size of a golf ball. I had to wear a knee brace on stage. I knew Miranda would if she could, so why the hell shouldn't I? It's she's literally telling her story. I mean, this is her life of being one of the most incredible dancers I have ever seen and losing that ability. My name is Miranda Davis. I am 33 years old. Two years ago, I was given my seventh diagnosis. Doctors say I won't make it past 40, but I've got a few stories left to tell. I want everyone to remember the thing you take for granted, someone else is fighting for. The minute that child put on ballet slippers, she was in her heaven. She was home. It sounds absurd, you know, for a three-year-old kid, but you actually saw in that a little bit of choreography. My parents adopted me at three days old. They've pretty much been all I've ever known of family. Can you spell your name? I can't imagine how scary that must have been to welcome a child with open arms and, and love them as your own, even though you knew nothing about their history and never made me feel any other way but loved and wanted. I got the call and, and came to tell her about it. So, so I'm standing there with these flowers waiting for her to show up. And He actually handed me a card that said, you were invited to come visit me and be my mommy for life. And it had Miranda Suzanne Davis on it. And that's how I knew that we had a daughter. We found out fairly early that she had lots of allergies to medications that could go from a simple cold to um, pneumonia. Just about the time of puberty is when it really, really started. I would be downstairs cooking breakfast and we would hear a thud and we would run upstairs and she will have passed out in the floor. And, and the real problem has been, you know, getting diagnosis for all these things because if doctors can't find it, you must not have it. It's only in the last few years that they really started identifying some of these things. In the 80s, there was a lot of secrecy with adoption and it was a closed adoption. And it was, it's amazing to me how little information they received. We're given a gift and our gift is to let the child grow up and, uh, and realize a dream. That's what parents do, dream. That's what we thought our job was, so that's what we've done. It was an innate born knowing that I was going to dance and live in New York. She came to class, and Miranda, as a dancer, always questioned <laughs> me. She was just after me 24 7. It was kind of like we lit each other on fire. She broke me down to a point where I questioned every single move I made. Next day, I came back and she started building me piece by piece back up.
she came to me before class one day and said, mm -mm, we gotta go. Don't come back to class. It hurt her. I knew it. It hurt my heart, but I had to do it. I had to say, you have to go. You can't come back. Why? Because she had to fly. She's got to live. And look what she's doing. She's living. That's amazing. It's more than amazing. It's just magnificent. Secretly, I was miserable. But I wouldn't let anybody know that. It's just, I hope I get through today without hurting. I have to ignore my pain and my symptoms and my stomach hurting, my head hurting. At the time, I had been diagnosed with four different diseases. The doctors told me that the autoimmune process was getting worse. My body started kind of falling apart. I was just having injury after injury. And so I had stopped dancing around 26. I don't even know how I did what I did, but I know for a fact I would not still be here if it wasn't for dance. The search for what was wrong with me took 28 years to figure out. Something that was very difficult, of course, to learn was that uh, my birth mother was addicted to heroin. She was addicted while she was pregnant with me and using a lot of different drugs. And the physician I spoke to about it basically said the reason, you know, you have so many of these diseases is because of that. Having to deal with the anger of somebody else's decisions affecting the rest of your life was very difficult. And um, she actually died a couple years ago of a heroin overdose. I got diagnosed with type 4 Ehlers-Danlos. Type 4 is the worst of all to have. There is literally nothing they can do. Most people die of uterine or heart rupture by 40. It won't be slow, it will be quick. I'm not afraid of the act of dying. I'm just afraid to leave everybody. <laughs> So you have to write a different book that might be shorter, but I guess a little thicker. <laughs> so I live two vastly different lives. 
One is this successful, traveling, productive person. And the other is this helpless, kind of dependent, sick person. I definitely keep a wall up. I think people only want to know to an extent. They ask me sometimes, like, what my diseases are, and I see them glaze over by the second sentence. Hashimoto's, dysautonomia, Valer Stanlos. They're words that are crazy, that you don't hear, that are hard to pronounce. There are people we still see that are extremely close with her that still think that she has cancer. And she doesn't. <laughs> I think because of years of having to, like, explain to people what was happening to her, I think it just becomes second nature for her to just be like, I'll get through it. I didn't believe the kiss at all. I don't know what you guys need to do. You've got a couple hours to figure out that you have a relationship. You guys need to have a conversation about what this is and find something that rings true. Ben Cameron is one of my best friends and somebody that makes me laugh harder than probably anybody. I used to judge a dance competition, and there was a group of kids giving you something so real and so from the gut. I asked the kids, I was like, who did this to you? Who is responsible for this? She'll take these, these dancers and just have them go for 16 counts, just pumping their fists down and stomping the floor. And you go, ah, I know what that is. I know that feeling. He understands my work. He understands where I'm coming from. Um, he understands my life. And it's odd because we don't talk about it that much. OK, lights go, sound go. She's taught me way more as a person, like, oh, just be real, just be true. Whatever. Miranda and I, like, literally everywhere we went, it turned into a dance party. <laughs> I've never laughed that much with someone in my whole life. We literally went to work the next day on, like, an hour's sleep because we stayed up the whole night laughing. I think that's truly what her show is about to me. Like, an unbreakable bond between people and how different people's lives are but still incorporated with one another. That's the end of Act One. I feel like there's always been a little distance between acknowledging the diseases and and how I see Mirinda, her career. She would get up yeah. and move, but yeah, she exactly. wasn't mm -hmm. she wasn't like killing it like we used to get. Right, 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 you right, know, right. it's hard for me to talk about that. It's hard for me to define her in that sort of stance. It just sounds scary when you think about it. And the character in the show doesn't act scared. Well, that's not the story that she wants to tell.
We basically rehearsed for two weeks in LA, nonstop. Hi. <laughs> Hi. I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt your film. You're at my house. And you're not even supposed to be traveling. No, not really. What are really. you, like, yeah. so half the time when I'm seeing your posts, I'm, I'm like scared for you. And yeah. then the other half, I'm like, ah, screw it. Let yeah. Me do that. <laughs> yeah. I was literally in the neighborhood with a friend of mine. And I have this feeling that you guys are, like your hearts are like the same. Okay. Um, so this is my friend, Julianne. <laughs> You all the time. You do? Yes. Oh my gosh, thank yeah. you so much. Oh. Well, I'm a huge fan. Oh, well, I'm First a First and foremost, fan of can you. I sit here? Like on the my guy couch. or the I girl? Love or... On my couch. Oh my gosh, of course. Thank you. It's so weird because I was watching you the other night and I literally had this moment of like, if I was still dancing, that mm. would be me. You know what I mean? <laughs> And I was just, I like went through it for a second because I was like, oh, I don't look like that anymore or, you know. Um, <laughs> and it's just amazing that this is happening, that I really like literally had that thought. You oh, did. So yeah, <laughs> like, oh, that could have been me, you know. I think it's so special when, when somebody can just be completely vulnerable and put themselves out there and your story is incredible. And you're so strong, <laughs> you're you're like not saying no to anything. You're just, you're living. Yeah, trying. <laughs> you are. Yeah. I've seen some of your work on like YouTube and uh -huh. I'm such a fan of, of dance and choreography and storytelling that that's always my heart yeah. and my soul. It's who we are. <laughs> it is, it really is who we are. Yeah. I wasn't coming back to Dancing with the Stars this season, but they asked me to come back and do a guest judging spot. And I said, the only way I would do that is if I could basically have you choreograph a piece oh on the show. God. That's like a dream come true. <laughs> like literally, I dream about this moment. Really? All the time. Yes. I also have one more question and a favor okay. uh, to ask you. Would you mind if, if it's okay with you, if uh, I played you? Oh my gosh! No way! <laughs> no way! <laughs> of course. Would that be okay? I would be so honored if you did that. You guys, did that just happen? Thanks, Justin. What? Literally, What? And then they were whatever, like, came out, and she's like, do you know what's happening? And then I was like, no. She's like, Julian Hobbs going to be playing Miranda. And I was like. <laughs> <laughs> It's a struggle, it's, it's vulnerable, and it's messy and scary. And um, I am learning that I do need to be more open with friends, and I have let more people in. People need people. <laughs> Miranda, I love you. I've told you your entire life that you've been a gift. She made me just wanna like, be who I am. She made me just want to like give my truth. She does that for a lot of people and I don't think people realize that until after. It's just valuing the life that you have and the people that are in it. And she always wants you to know that you're appreciated and loved. God, I hope she knows how appreciated and loved she is, how powerful she is. You know, we're all dreamers and she's always been brave enough to, to go do it. She's constantly worrying about when someone's birthday is, when she's facing the end of her life and for some reason she can look at a friggin' birthday card. I don't think there are people like her. I want people to look at me and be able to put their own lives in perspective. What's in your way? Move it. Get it out of your way. It's not really in your way.